Greetings. I am sorry that unforeseen circumstances have prevented me from traveling to Rio de Janeiro, but I am glad that uh, thanks to the wonders of technology, I can connect with you through this medium. I would like to start by thanking the organizers of ISQUA's 31st International Conference for the invitation to deliver the opening address. I would especially like to thank the co-chairs of the conference, Tracy Cooper, president of ISQUA, and Jose Carvalho, senior researcher at the Osvaldo Cruz Foundation. Um, I, I am also grateful to my esteemed colleague, David Bates. I should tell you that I had the privilege of being an early member of the International Society for Quality in Healthcare. I joined ISQUA in the mid-1980s, inspired by one of the giants in the field of quality of care, Avedis Donavidian. I had met him in Mexico in 1978 and later became his student at the University of Michigan. I can barely describe how uh, fortunate I feel that I became close to this extraordinary man. Ours was the paradigmatic mentoring relationship. In our age of mass education, the mentor has become an endangered academic species. A mentor teaches you, but is much more than a teacher. What a mentor does is one of the greatest gifts of generosity. He or she sows in your mind and in your soul the seeds that will nourish your intellect and spirit for the rest of your life. This is what Avidis Donavidian gave me. Donavidian remains as the most influential thinker on the quality of healthcare. Through a corpus of articles, books, and lectures spanning more than three decades, he laid the foundations for a deeper understanding of this important area of health systems. His seminal paper of 1966 introduced the concepts of structure, process, and outcomes, which remain to our day as the dominant paradigm for the evaluation of the quality of healthcare. An indicator of the importance of this paper is the fact that it is one of the few citation classics in the field of health systems research. A culminating point in this remarkable body of work is the Donabedian series of three volumes on what he called explorations in quality assessment and monitoring, which are the definitive systematization of concepts, methods, and evidence. Now, one of the ideas that Avidis Donabedian treasured and promoted was that clear thinking is a requirement for effective action. And this is the central message of my lecture today. To elaborate on this message, I will use as a case study the comprehensive health system reform that I had the honor of leading as Minister of Health of Mexico between 2000 and 2006. Through this reform, we were able to provide comprehensive social protection in health to more than 50 million Mexicans who until then had lacked access to conventional social insurance. The instrument that drove this unprecedented expansion was a public insurance scheme called Seguro Popular. I would argue that one of the main reasons why the recent Mexican reform succeeded was because it was based from the very beginning on a clear conceptual framework that guided its implementation. So in the first part of my presentation, I will discuss the central elements of this framework with emphasis on those concepts related to quality of care. In the second and final part, I will describe the policy components of the Mexican reform with emphasis again on a system-wide quality improvement strategy. So let me start with the conceptual discussion. The key concept that guided the design of the Mexican health reform was social protection in health. This comprehensive notion includes three dimensions. First, protection against public health risks through surveillance, preventive, and regulatory activities. Second, protection of patients through quality assurance of health care. And third, financial protection against the economic consequences of disease and injury. We decided to use the term social protection in health instead of health coverage because this last concept has been traditionally restricted to personal health services. 
while the former implies access to both personal and public health services. We also prefer social protection over the term health insurance because health insurance is usually limited to the protection only against the financial risks associated with disease and disability. With its various components, social protection should also be distinguished from the term social security, which in most parts of the world is a benefit covered, covering only salaried workers and their families. In fact, social protection represents an advanced stage of social security in that coverage is no longer seen merely as a benefit of employment, but rather as a right of citizenship. Furthermore, decoupling coverage from salaried employment has emerged as a common policy purpose across major reform initiatives from the United States and Mexico to China, South Africa, and beyond. Let me now focus on the dimension of social protection that directly relates to the quality of health care. In this regard, the Mexican reform adopted key concepts from the World Health Organization Framework for the assist, assess, Assessment of Health System Performance, which was used to produce the World Health Report 2000. The quality contents of this framework, as you will see, were strongly inspired by the work of Avedis, Avedis Donavidi. The WHO framework recognizes two components in quality of healthcare, a technical and an interpersonal component. Technical quality refers to the effectiveness and safety of services. In turn, the interpersonal component refers to the responsiveness of the health system to the legitimate expectations of the population regarding health care. Responsiveness itself has two major subcomponents. First, respect for persons, and second, client orientation. Respect for persons includes respect for the dignity of patients, respect for individual autonomy, and respect, respect for confidentiality. And then the client orientation subcomponent includes prompt attention to health needs, the existence of adequate basic amenities of care, and access to social support networks in case of hospitalization, and then, very importantly, choice of provider. How was a conceptual framework that, like this, translated into a set of specific policies? Let me turn to the final part of my presentation by discussing with you the use of the framework on the design and implementation of several policy measures included in the Mexican reform. I will start by saying that the comprehensive scope of the reforms implied innovations which are providing protection against public health risks, financial protection against the economic consequences of disease and injury, and protection of patients through quality assurance of healthcare, the three dimensions of the concept of social protection in health. Regarding actions on, in the realm of public health, the first dimension, the Mexican reform established three main instruments. First, we established a protected fund for community health services targeting health promotion and, di and disease prevention interventions, which um, allowed, among other things, for a major expansion of the basic immunization scheme and a complete immunization coverage of over 95% of children. Secondly, we included additional public health investments to enhance human security through epidemiologic surveillance and improve preparedness to respond to emergencies, natural disasters, and many of the threats related to globalization, including pandemics. And third, there was a major reorganization leading to the establishment of a new public health agency charged with the protection against health risks through food safety, definition of environmental standards, promotion of occupational safety, and prevention of work-related injury, regulation of the pharmaceutical industry, and control of hazardous substances like alcohol and tobacco. So this was the first big dimension, protection against health risks. Second was financial protection, and here the instrument we designed to protect the users of health services against the financial consequences of disease and disability was Seguro Popular. Now this uh, public insurance scheme guarantees access to a comprehensive package 
of 260 essential health services and over 60 high-cost interventions, including treatment for cancer in children, HIV AIDS, and breast cancer, among many others. And finally, the third dimension of social protection is the protection of patients through quality assurance uh, uh, measures. This was part of a system-wide strategy which we call the National Crusade for Quality in Healthcare. Now, obviously, we're using the term crusade here in its secular meaning to, to mean, to signify a focused, concerted effort across all actors, in this case, focused on improving quality in healthcare. And this included seven specific initiatives that I, I will uh, briefly mention. First, the reorganization of the Ministry of Health to create the position of Undersecretary for Innovation and Quality, which was actually the second position in command in the ministry. Second measure was the establishment of an ethical platform for quality of care, which included a charter of patients' rights and a code of ethics for health professionals. Third, there was the organization of training programs on quality improvement tools for all healthcare providers. Fourth, the monitoring of quality indicators, both, both through the regular information systems and through external surveys to measure satisfaction and responsiveness. Remember that you cannot improve what you cannot measure, so a big part of the National Crusade was to measure and monitor those indicators. Then the fifth measure was the establishment of a national quality award and a program of financial support for the implementation of quality improvement initiatives at the local level. Six was the creation of a compulsory accreditation mechanism for all service providers to Seguro Popular beneficiaries. And it was the first time that an insurance scheme was linked to a requirement for accreditation in Mexico. And then finally, <clears throat> we had the design and, uh, of, a, of a very innovative social participation strategy. These were called the Citizens Quality Councils. And the purpose was to train groups of volunteers from civil society to assess the responsiveness of healthcare providers. So those were the seven measures of the National Crusade, which was this system-wide strategy. Now, there was another very crucial component of the health reform, which was an external evaluation that was embedded in the original reform design. So this was not an afterthought. Uh, to evaluate the reform. This was a core component of the whole reform initiative. And in fact, we wrote into law the requirement for uh, such an evaluation. It, the evaluation had internal components, and then it also had an external evaluation. And that was actually <coughs> developed by a team of researchers uh, from Harvard University. Uh, that included both observational studies, but there was also a very interesting community trial uh, that was carried out in 2005 and 2006 in over 38,000 households. And this took advantage, this trial took advantage of the fact that implementation of the Seguro Popular had to be phased in over, over several months. So <clears throat> we used that opportunity to randomly assign some communities that would go in the first stage and compare them with communities that were, would go in, in a later stage. This design is now considered one of the largest randomized healthcare, uh, health policy experiments ever. And the uh, study showed that Seguro Popular was actually reducing out-of-pocket expenditures and providing protection against catastrophic health expenditures, especially uh, among the poorest households. There were, as I said, additional observational studies that also showed that those affiliated to Seguro Popular have a higher probability of service use conditional on perceived need than the uninsured individuals. Um, to just give one example, for example, effective coverage for breast cancer screening has increased and access to comprehensive treatment is now uh, universal in the case of breast cancer and many other interventions. Uh, so for example, in 2010, Seguro Popular was financing the treatment of 17,000 women with this disease. And just to give um, uh, a, a, a concrete example, uh, uh, women abandoning treatment for financial reasons, which were about 30%, that's now down to 1% of women with breast cancer. That's just an illustration of the sort of evaluation that actually provided a lot of the political support to continue the implementation of this reform over successive 
uh, government administration. So the recent Mexican reform illustrates the successful implementation of the broad concept of social protection, which includes a quality component at its very core. Uh, its strong evidence base has been a powerful factor in its success. And furthermore, the international dissemination of the evaluations and their use in the design of new initiatives throughout the world clearly show that uh, the, the, you know, the process of globalization can turn knowledge into an international public good, which can then be brought to, to the domestic policy agenda in order to address a local problem. So we need to create a virtual circle where we do local implementation of innovations, but then we evaluate and then feed this back into the global pool of experience so that we can generate a process of shared learning across countries. In line uh, with the central message of this lecture, I would like to conclude uh, by quoting my mentor, Avidis Donavidian, who in 1986 stated the following, and I quote, the world of ideas and the world of action are not separate, as some would have us think, but inseparable parts of each other. Ideas in particular are the truly potent forces that shape the tangible world." End of quote. The International Society for Quality in Healthcare has honored this vision since its inception. Its conferences are a vivid example of the fruitful exchange of ideas that is nourishing quality of healthcare programs and policies all around our interdependent world. I wish you all a successful conference and remain deeply grateful for the honor of allowing me to address you today. Thank you very much.